into the last section in our The Gospel Matters series. And in this section of God's Word, we're going to look at what it means for us to be on mission. We've seen so far in this series that as disciples of Jesus, we are called to live as a redeemed family of servants. And now we're looking at what it means for us to live on mission. That Jesus has redeemed us. He's done everything necessary for us to be his. We've been adopted as God's children, which means we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, We are characterized by our love for one another. And just as Jesus has served us, so we are called to serve others in response in extravagant ways. And all of these truths, as they thrill our heart, should motivate us to want to see others become disciples of Jesus. We want others to listen to him through his word and live together with um, his people as a redeemed family of servants. And so all of this flows into what it means to be on mission. And that's what we're going to dig into in this passage, looking at what it means for us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In Matthew's gospel, this is a part of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, Jesus is talking, as we're told in chapter 5 verse 1, to a crowd, but specifically to his disciples. Just before this, we've seen the Beatitudes, blessed are, um, telling us what the blessed life looks like as disciples of Jesus. Verses 10 to 12 have made it clear that um, persecution is a reality for those who follow Jesus as disciples. And it is in this world in which we are to live as these blessed ones, in which we are to be salt and light. So Jesus says here, you are, verse 14, you are. Now, these are not imperatives. These are indicatives. Indicatives. And they are describing what we are. And in this section, though, there is one imperative which is important for us to note, and that is over here, let your light shine. That is the imperative, the verb, that is a command, telling us what we are to do as disciples of Jesus. So we see Jesus says two um, different but related things about who we are as disciples. He says, you are the salt of of the earth and then you are the light of the world in the greater context of Matthew it's important for us to uh, think about Matthew 28 18 to 20 in those verses we are given the great commission so Jesus says all authority has been given to him and then he says go make disciples go and tell them everything I've commanded you and surely I'm with you to the very end of the age. So we see there that all authority has been given to Jesus and he wants all people to know it. And so he sends his disciples out on mission and this is part of what it looks like to be on mission. We are to be the salt of the earth. Now to be a salty disciple or a salty Christian the world will notice a distinct flavor to our lives. To be a a salty Christian is to be distinctive, uh, to add flavor, to have a a good effect on the world around you, um, just as salt also preserves. Now, when Jesus says, speaks about losing your saltiness, this is the the Greek word, moreno, and that's where we get the word moron from, actually. And Jesus is saying there, uh, don't, don't let your saltiness be, uh, turn you into a fool. Uh, don't, don't lose your saltiness and therefore become a fool. Um, this, the verb is used only four times in the New Testament. And in Romans 1 verse 22 and 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20, it has the meaning of becoming foolish. So disciples who lose their saltiness are in fact making themselves fools. And Jesus is saying, you are the salt of the earth, so don't lose your saltiness. Linking in with this, you could go to Psalm 34, verse 8, where we read, Taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Now, if we are the salt of the earth, people should both taste and see the Lord's goodness in us. Uh, or you could go to Colossians. Colossians 4, verse 5 to 6, where Paul says, Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders, making the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you, know, you may know how to answer everyone. So if you are the salt of the earth, we are meant to have a, a, be distinctive and to have a good impact on the world around us. And then Jesus says, you are the light of the world. It's also important to see it. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Not a light. You are the light of the world. Now, in John's gospel, Jesus said of himself, I am the light of the world. If you look back in uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, we're told that the people living in darkness have seen a great light talking about the Lord Jesus coming as the light of the world. But now Jesus says in this chapter, you are the light of the world. And I think a good way to understand this is just as the moon reflects the light of the sun, so we are to reflect the light of Christ. It should be the light of Christ that is seen in us. And that should be seen, the light of the world. We want this light to be seen everywhere be shining everywhere. And Jesus' illustration here isn't difficult for us to understand. A town on a hill can't be hidden. A lamp on its stand gives light to everyone in the house. You, you can't hide the light. And if we are the light, Jesus is saying, don't hide it. You need to be visible, not invisible. So you need to be salty. Don't lose your saltiness. So don't become diluted or useless salt. And also, don't be invisible disciples. You need to be shining. Let your light shine. And there, just as a town on a hill can't be hidden, just as a light on its stand gives light to everyone, then Jesus says, in the same way, just like that, let your light shine. And where should it shine? Well, we've already said we are the light of the world. But he says here, before others. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds. So our light shines by the way we live, by the good deeds we do. The emphasis here for how we let our light shine is through our good works. But it does say, let your light shine, the imperative, before others, that is those in the world around us, that they may see your good deeds. And what's the result? And glorify your Father in heaven. Now, how will these people know? The people before whom we do these good works, how will they know that that's how they should respond? Well, it has to be that they've heard us speaking about our great God. They've heard us rejoicing in the redemption that is ours because of Jesus and the joy of being a part of his family and how Jesus has served us and called us to serve others because we are a redeemed family of servants and these truths thrill our hearts as disciples and we want others to know. And as we live as a redeemed family of servants, our mission is fueled, our light shines before others, they see our good deeds and they end up glorifying our Father in heaven because it's not about us. We want all the glory to go to our great God. So Jesus, talking to his disciples, was saying, don't be diluted, disciples. Don't lose your saltiness. Don't be invisible. Make sure that you remember you are the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, all of this implies that we are living out on the earth, in the world, in a way that's visible, that others will actually see us. And this should be taking place in our normal, everyday life. When Jesus said in Matthew 28, Go, therefore, and make disciples, we often think, oh, that means go to the ends of the earth. And yes, we do need to get this gospel to the ends of the earth. And many Christians will go to faraway lands, but for the vast majority of us, go and make disciples will mean go to your children, go to your family members, go to your classmates, go across the road to your neighbors, go to the people in the local shopping center, 
and be salt and be light. Let your light shine before all of those people that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We want the world to know what a joy it is to belong to Jesus, to be his redeemed people. We want others to be living for the glory of God. And so we need to live in a way that points people. We reflect the light of Christ. Jesus is the light of the world. And it's the light of Christ that is then seen in us as our lives are transformed more and more into his likeness and as we live together. And I think that's an important thing to note in this passage. All of the yous and the yours in this whole section are all plural. It's difficult for us to spot this in the English, but the Greek makes it clear. All of this, you together as disciples of Jesus are the salt of the earth. You together as disciples of Jesus are the light of the world. Together let your light shine before others. The world should see the way that we live together as disciples of Jesus. And they should want to know more. And as we speak about Jesus and what he's done for us, all the glory goes to our Father in heaven. Now in hearing these phrases here, it may ring a bell, sounds a whole lot like 1 Peter 2 verse 9 to 12. In that section we see that we've been called out of darkness into the wonderful light. And then we're told that we should live good lives so that others may see and glorify God as a result. So Peter was very much reflecting on these words that he had heard Jesus speak on this day on the Sermon on the Mount. Peter had listened and he had taken this word seriously. He had taken Jesus' command seriously. And so he wanted to be a disciple whose light shone. And we should want to be those kind of disciples too, shining the light of the gospel to the world around us so that others will come to bring glory to our Father in heaven. Well, as you dig into this further, I really do encourage you to try and think practically what it might look like for you and the group who you are teaching to live together in a way that is salty, that lets your light shine before others around you. Actually pray intentionally about people who you feel that God is leading you to be on mission to. Specific people that God has placed in your life who you can tell about this glorious Savior who came as the light of the world, the one who's changed your life, the one whose light is being seen through you. And then think of practical ways that you can live together in the everyday stuff of life. On mission isn't something that we turn on and off. We're always being sent and we're to live as sent ones, live as salt and light people, shining before others in the everyday stuff of life. Think about how you as uh, a church, as a group within the church, can live that out more intentionally, all for the glory of God. Well, God bless as you dig in further. Pray that this section will challenge and encourage your own heart and that it will spur us as God's people to keep living for His glory.